and welcome to tonight's live painting demo. Tonight I'm doing a painting of George Pama Giseve. I'm not sure actually how it's pronounced. He's a, a model and Instagram influencer that um, lives in Russia and uh, came across his photo in Instagram. And this is the one that actually got chosen in the end. Um, uh, since uh, I've been having some technical difficulty, please let me know if you can hear me and uh, if if there's any problems. And um, please uh, let me know where you something about you. If you have any questions for me, I'm more than happy to answer them as I paint. So anyway, I'm going to get this painting on the way. I'm just going to mix up just a little bit of gray, just to pinkish gray just to use to put in a little bit of my architectural lines. And so I'm going to do something a little different today. Um, usually I'll just sort of rough in and then I'll, I'll measure to see if everything I've put in is sort of somewhat in the right place. And uh, tonight I'm going to take a little bit of an opposite approach. I'm going to put in some um, boundary lines and then some, um, some, uh, landmark um, designation points and then I'm going to do my drawing from there drawing with the paint just so that I have a sense of where um, everything should go so right now I'm measuring to that eyebrow to the side of the panel and again like most nights I'm painting um, uh, at scale and um, as close to side size as I can while um, videoing this so I want to get um, chin from the bottom. That seems to be the right place. Center line of the chin is about right. I want to get this, make sure this line, this angle is right, because that's going to be critical in the painting. So just over just a little bit and Again, that measurement is pretty good. So it just comes in a little bit more. And then I'm going to try to do the same with the jawline. It starts here, so I want to go actually to this point. It's not quite a straight line, but it's close to it. So here. And then I want the from the top or the bottom. So I know right here, and so I know the end point, so, and then it moves up from there to the base of the ear. I want to get those measurements in. That's right from the side. So having these landmarks nailed down a little bit better may help me a little bit um, find my way Last week, it was I had a real struggle with trying to find the locations of things, and so I was going back and forth quite a bit. So hopefully this will help me. <clears throat> Actually, I can check my own sound level by turning on my sound, so let's see. Yep, uh, sounds like this. Yep, sounds like the sound's coming in nice and clear. So good. Um, I started the last video off with the mic wasn't actually completely plugged in to my phone. So a um, little problem there until someone um, wrote in the comment that they couldn't hear me at all. Wasn't sure why at first. Okay, so I have this as the very top point of the head. Okay, so this swoop comes down to the outside here. Swoop of the hair. And seeing an angle, something like that. Okay, so I am going to get more landmarks in. Yeah, that's about right here. Highest point in the head is I already put in that measurement, but I want to get kind of get it more from the side too. So this is the high point here. And then from there it goes down. Angle something like that. Okay. 
landmarks going to down a bit. Let's double check that measurement. Okay, I see Joy's joining us. Uh, she says, sounds great, good. And Arturo is here, thumbs up, great. Okay, so bottom of the eye. I'm sorry, bottom of the eyebrow, something like that. And then we have, I may have pulled that out a little bit too far, in which case I can just correct it with a little bit of paint just to get a little bit of white in there. And I can chop it off a little. Okay, but I do want to go back the other way. Bit. Okay, so I think um, George is on Instagram, his Instagram account that he um, recommends uh, lifestyle products and beauty products, and he also gives some information, sort of uh, grooming tips, I think. So, you know, a uh, very good looking lad. I don't know if he gets quite the exposure he would have if he were, um, if he were in the United States being in, in Russia. It may not be. Okay, sorry. Now it kicked back in. Um, sorry about a little bit of dropout here. My internet service is a little sketchy, and plus I have my whole family on bandwidth with them. And so sometimes that makes it a little bit more difficult. Okay, the nose, I didn't, so it's somewhere around there. Tip of the nose barely breaks the, the edge of his face, even though I drew it out a bit further. Yeah. And a little bit here. Okay. This is really the shadow side of his face, has a lot of red in it. Really got a yellows in the lights here. That means the shadow should go a little more purple. So let's just add a little bit of magenta to that coloring. I can come back in with some lights and define some of the features in that shadow. And I want to pick a background color. I think that's going to help me a little bit because um, I can then um, draw back and forth a little bit with the with the paint. Have the his eye there. The lid comes out a little bit further. Something like that. And then we do see his cheek line and then mouth. I just want to come out a little bit further with the nose. It's a lot of red and orange in his um, skin coloring there. That's not quite as bright as I would like it. So I can juice that up a little bit and get a much brighter pink that grade eights to white let's just indicate a nostril for now it doesn't have to be perfect but just to get an idea well should be at least close but <laughs> I can fix that a little bit Not too bad. Let's redefine some of those edges a little bit. And I have my alizarin permanent that I can go pretty dark with the red there. And 
see. We can see in the light side of his face that his eye is his eye color is kind of green. Okay, so let's figure out where his mouth is. Um, actually, I want to double check the the nose here. So it looks like it's uh, could be an, a tad higher. So I'm just going to pull it up just a little here, and then the top of the mouth. Just doing a lot of measuring tonight. It's going to take me a while to get through the whole face, but so I'm measuring the lips, that top edge. Yep, right where I think it should be. darker on that side down let's use a little of that red here on the underside of the nose and if you give me a second I'm gonna refill my orange which is permanent orange it's a nice middle-of-the-road orange with a fairly high tinting strength again a gamble in artist color and I'm going to have a fair amount of that in the skin tones but not so much but both in the shadow and on the light side of the face excuse me let's get a little bit of this yellow in to kind of get a sense of it. Just scrub that in. Let's put some white on top. Now I'm going to even have to go lighter than that in the end, but we have his eye there, so let's get a good measurement of that from the tear duct to the edge. measurement from the top real quick so that looks pretty spot on let's throw some of that eye color in it's fairly blue Got the crease in the eyelid here. So, and this is per, in perspective, so I want to make sure that this center point here is going to be more to the left than the center point of this curve here. Just a little bit to give that idea of that it's moving a little bit towards us but also a bit to the side to give it the right sense of space sense of perspective and we almost have pure white there and there because there's a bit of highlight right in the in the tear duct there hopefully I got that about in the right place Okay, 
it's looking pretty good. I'm going to have to pull a little more white under that pupil there, pupil, iris. Something like that for now. And then we got the whitest part of the eye here where the sun is hitting it directly. Hopefully you guys are still with me here. On the edge of his nose. Coming in a bit a bit of blue. And if I can put in a little more pink, lighter pink here. Make sure I get that light enough, because it is moving towards white here. Moving lighter, I should say, as it starts to blend in with that yellow. Then we got more of a yellow-orange color on the upper lip. Touch of reds coming in there. Have the center point of the lips. Where the edge of the nose meets the face with a bit of yellow going underneath it. So that yellow is very close to white. Oh, I obliterated what I just put down, so let's try that again. And we got some really strong red. Now I pumped up the, the contrast in this, in his face quite a bit, which in turn made the colors a little more intense. Um, but I liked it, so I kept it, even though it, it starts to uh, leave, starting to look a little bit unnatural, but it's close. It gives you the feeling of the light really hitting pretty strongly on his face. And quickly, I'm just going to put in that reflection that I may end up changing a few times. So I really just, I want to feel the quality of the, the skin just to kind of get that um, get that nice uh, almost like a little reward there really starting to see what's going on okay let's get a nice light pink coming across here defining that that edge of the nostril as it turns want to be careful with the tip of his nose, giving it the right shape. Last week's painting was got off to a very rough start. And by this, I'm already feeling the volume and the fix, which is where I'd like to be. And feeling it a fair amount of value control, which is really important, especially in this stage of the painting, I feel like. Okay, so now the lower lip. That center line from his lip pulling, just going across at my brain. It's coming back pretty quickly to there, and then it's coming down here. And then the lips are split kind of in two shapes on the bottom. The upper lip is more three, 
you have this sort of rounded shape and then the two wings on the upper lip. And then the bottom, it's almost, it's split almost in two rounded shapes. So you just kind of keep that in mind. And then I do want to hit the shadow again, fairly violet underneath the lips. <clears throat> and here's where I want to draw back in a little bit with the blue. Mix a little bit of our medium with it. That's too light, so let's get a little more blue in there. Okay, that's good. cut off a little bit of my lips there more than I wanted to so this comes out right there then comes just about straight down or the same angle as the side of his face okay something like that really feel like his this eye is not is he's not looking up enough so I have to change the shape of the eye a little bit the shape of the, the iris and get his pupil up just a little bit higher here okay and I need to make that pupil a little more forward he's looking in the right direction. Side two. So I'm using a fairly big uh, round, I think it's a six, um, but it's not really working well as a detail brush. But I like the texture of the brush strokes that it's giving me, so I'm not quick to abandon it for a smaller brush. And we're going to pull the light of the the white of the eye a bit higher here. That's looking that's looking a little bit better. And a little smoother transition. I am missing a little bit of his eyelashes there. A, a very strong dark. I'm just going to leave it like that for now. Okay. So right now I'm going to switch to a bigger brush because I really want to get. Um, lot of color for in the cheeks and the side of the face. So we have a lot of pink in his cheek and then the lower side of his face is falling into shadow. And I think it's probably something's blocking the light it looks like and that's what's lighting the top part of his face but not the bottom part of his face. To be a little bit you know, analytical about how his face is lit. Let's get that shadow in here a little bit better. There seems to be a little bit of orange in the shadow down here, or at least in the transition into shadow. And that's just a wee bit too dark. Let's get a little more white in there. pink. Okay, that's that's looking better. And then we have some lights coming in to the ch Okay. And I can see I'm really missing and it's gone generally too red. So just sort of red green, pull it over to purple and yellow.
opening to see where I am. That kind of reduces the detail so you can see the larger patterns. Okay, went a little bit too cool there because there was just too much white in the mixture. As this transitions into the light, I need to go lighter, more yellow. And then in some areas, almost to white. Let's get that eyebrow in. Well, I would be. Orange and yellow. And then for the dark areas in the hair, I may do a mixture of black and dioxazine purple. Let's put it starting. Let's just get a little bit of black in there. Let's just move in with a little bit of yellow, I mean, sorry, with a bit of orange. Okay, so, um, so Michael Springer says, how do you adjust your studio lighting so that it does not wash out your monitor but keeps your easel and panel illuminated? Um, I'm not sure I really tried that hard to make this work because it hadn't, hasn't been a, a big problem. Um, it's a little bit different than what you're seeing on the phone. Um, I'm just trying to match the colors that I see in the monitor and I have off because it tends to make everything a little bit more orange if you hold on a second. Because okay. my overhead added or take photographs later, then it all goes very cool. And so hopefully that'll help a little bit. Um, but generally I have a light that's off to one side and I have a, a nest. And they do a good a pretty good job at it's not, um, I, don't, I don't do any gray cards or haven't done any light balancing per se, um, but the, do that much to get it to look like the color of the painting. So at least in terms of my later photography goes, then it's fairly well balanced. I spent doing portraiture and I would have to bring the, the paintings upstairs to, tr to full lighting to kind of get a sense of where the colors were and then I would bring it back down into the basement and obviously this was not a good system you want to be able to judge the colors immediately as you're working to be able to adjust them so I was really kind of set up for failure in that in that scenario it took me a while to realize that and get out of the basement altogether <clears throat> so bring in a little bit more white here
and then he has almost the lightest light here right in this crease of the the nose where it's against the cheek I'm gonna knock out those other little gaps in there where white was coming through from the panel so that that reflection that um, highlight can read properly bring some more yellows in here Try to. Okay, and then we have a, another spot of pure white right here along the corner of the eye. If I can get it in the right place. bit in that crease it gets much darker in that one spot okay just looking at little spots and areas of color that are defining the form and trying to get those in the right spots go some nice reddish shadow where the cast shadow from the hair coming across here it's that are there with the hair coming coming down His eyebrow here is a mixture of different things. There's some skin tones coming through the separation of the hair a little bit. And then there's some darker notes on the top of the eyebrow. And then it thins out before it drops under the hairline. And again, we have a cast shadow from the hair that comes right across the eyebrow at that spot. So don't, I don't quite have the shape of his mouth right yet, but um, it doesn't feel like it's too far off. We have the philtrum coming back away, sort of uh, inward and then a little bit outward at the end. And then I can, and then his lips come out just a little bit more than what I have him. getting there um, so my sister is here watching tonight okay let's get a little bit lighter purple here on the side of the, the jaw here and then we have a bit of shadow fairly neutral let's get some reds in right here go a little bit lighter in the reflective light here because we don't have the blue sky right there we actually have a shadow warm shadow of his jacket here that's not going to be nearly dark enough so I want black a bit of orange and red in there let's see if that gets us yep yeah, that's a bit better Gonna throw some of the safflower oil with the mixture so it goes down more easily. This jacket. Okay. 
pupil back again a little bit. And a little bit of reddish color on this side. That's not too bad. And then I'm going to throw in a highlight. Just getting a little bit of white on the tip of the brush. And I can be fairly controlled about where that touches. And I want almost pure white here in the white of the eye where the light is coming in. That starts to pop a little bit. Okay, my sister Mindy says, AJ, how do you put wet paint on top of wet paint without it blending? Um, well, I want it to blend is part of it. And then if I come in thick enough over wet paint, um, then the thicker paint will um, mix less. So it's a little bit about um, control of the of the thickness of the paint and the type of brush used. A softer brush also will the stiffer brush. And Engelman Art says, hi AJ from Kentucky. I need this much. Okay, there we go. And I still want to even go um, more white in there. I really want to get that feeling of light coming in. Now I have him feeling like he's looking up even more, but that's okay. It's not that hard to bring it back to still. Almost like that, the dark around his eye color is almost reddish. Okay, so got to pull, push and pull a little bit with the values till they start to read correctly can soften up some of these transitions in here without getting too blendy. Okay, here. Now that's way too strong, but I can always carve into it a little bit, knock it down, and get a very fine, subtle line. I'm going to come in pure black in some of these spots. Let's get a little more definition on this eye that's here because it's starting to look a little awkward. Let's put some of the eyelashes in here so we can see, get the sense of where things are here. Mixing a lot of this bluish mixture because I know I'm going to need it for this whole area around his head. Seemed to have lost his upper eyebrow a bit, but that's okay. I can. Okay, so let's 
give him a little bit of some hairline here. And I'm going to start to put in his ear. I think I want the bigger brush for his to start off with the ear. It's fairly pink. I'm pulling out a lot of um, of the crinacridone red. It's a very special color because it's just so darn intense. It's the only way you can really get that strong pink color. With the, uh, it's the other color. And it just depends on how cool you want your reds. Um, I go for crinacridone red because of between the naphthal red and the alizarin crimson or alizarin permanent. That's not quite the right color there. I need to go much lighter and have a lot more. Got some more of that alizarin, um, crinacridone red rather. Just, I'm just pouring it on. I do have more tubes of white, but I'm going to have to put more down on my palette soon. of white down in this area to get it light enough. It's just, it sa feels saggy, if that makes any sense. It feels droopy, so it just needs to be up higher a little bit more. It all, it all needs to be a bit higher. feeling better okay you know the problem with painting good-looking people is that your painting has to look good <laughs> or or it really does um, you want your painting to be better looking than the person if you, if you can it's terrible when you take someone who's you know has model good looks and then your painting looks like um, Echo Mono or something. Looks like a terrible mess. Okay, I need to do some adjustments around the lips there. Separation of his lips is a little bit lower than when I first painted it. Nope, that's, I'm all caught up.
Okay, and I can see I need to work on my transitions here a little bit. Don't want to get too, do too much with a too small a brush, but I do need to have a little bit of control over those. But I can also do that with a bigger brush. But let's just get a little bit in first here. Hyper focused on some of these um, the details around the eye to make sure that I get the right placement. Generally, these creases in the, the eyelid will have a sharper edge, usually on the bottom. And then the top edge will be more diffuse, and that'll help create the illusion that the, that, that flesh over the eyelid is curving out, bulging out a little. So then you start to see the dimensionality a little bit here. Let's see if I can get these light spots in here that are very yellow. of red here under on the underside of his eyelid here. And then a nice dark deep red right in the spot. Where his eyebrow is. Nice lighter pink purple area right here. And then a little bit of his on fleek. The placement of things aren't perfect, but it's pretty close. So at some point I'll have to stop and evaluate whether I want to adjust things or not. Let's move this light up higher.
I'm going to try to get this light that's underneath his eyebrow. It has a lot of orange in it. Still keep it pretty dark. I think this is the color right here. Adjust it back a little. That's not too bad. Okay. And again, adjusting his profile a little bit. It's looking pretty good. Kind of mix up a little more of his hair color. And he has, I can't really say hair color because he has so many different colors in his hair. So just want to paint it one small area at a time, making sure to match, get a pretty good match to the color. Going to measure the top of his ear the highest point. So I painted his ear slightly too high. And so I have to come back, come out a little shallower here. He has a Darwin point and then down and then his hairline comes out right here. <coughs> Eventually I'm going to get to his hands, which are going to cause me quite a deal of consternation, but we'll get there. The night is young. I can cheat. Well, I don't know if it's really cheating and just sort of skip his hands altogether, but I think a lot of people picked this image because of of wanting to see me paint the hands also. So I, try, I will try not to disappoint them. Just, if you look at the bottom edge of his nostril, there's a, there's a reflection highlight there, right up against a fair amount of red. Let's try that again. And then underneath that is a nice pink. And a deeper red. darker there. And there's a transitional purple color here.
Okay. Um, in about an hour, which means that maybe my kids aren't playing as many video games. Okay, I think I have that dark too high. So I'm going to try to bring that down a bit. Ironically, I just painted it higher because it's got some of that black and green together for this, for his eye bluish. Okay, that's looking a bit better. And I need just enough indication of white in that shadow side so that you see which direction he's looking in. looks right now. No, it's still too high. Gosh darn it. It's always going to be... So, the eye is the right height if I use part of that dark for his upper eyelid. So He's got some eyelashes going right here. Okay can do quite a bit of adjustment still, but, but that means his eyebrow has got to be lower than what I have it. Good. Well, I'm liking it. I'm starting to like it. Okay. Everything's working. The painting's coming together. And all is right with the world, except for the avocado shortage. But other than that, other than possible shortages in avocados, which I find quite upsetting, um, that's my interest. So that's where we come down to measuring a bit more. That's in the right place. Whereas knuckle is touching, his jaw needs to be lower. And it doesn't have to be a lot lower, but just enough to change that proportion. That's a and I know I measure that, but it's a matter of getting everything to turn in the right speed. That's that's too light, but I can adjust that easily. It's feeling better. Let's get that shadow side in. I need the tear duct coming out just a little bit further here. That's feeling pretty good. Feeling very eye-like.
Let's see if I can go lighter here and the bridge of the nose. Oh yeah, that is looking nice. And some warm red coming in here. And the transition. A softer pink in that eyelid, the lower eyelid here, just a little bit. Okay, everything's still working. Let me refresh this. Come on. Shabani says, hey, strokes application. Um, yeah, I might do that. Um, I was keen to be able to show the palette to people who were asking me to, um, to show my color mix. Just going back and forth a little bit of these forms around the eye to get them to read in the, in the cheek to, to read. Sometimes that takes just um, altering the value subtly back and forth until you get it. Around some other shapes that are facing towards us. So going back and forth between the two areas so that they look like they're pointing. Just need to make his nose just a tad bit shorter too. That's just a very subtle adjustment. But I think it's helpful to get when you see some of those things.
Just going thick, much thicker with the paint in some spots where it needs it to really feel the flesh, giving it some texture and just piling on the paint to get those really lighter areas. Just really pulling back the edge of that face a little bit till it feels like it's in the right position. Just takes just having a little bit a little bit off um, feels so wrong. So it just takes a while to get there. Okay, I think I got enough of his face in for now. I do want to start to block in some of these other areas. They're not as critical in terms of measurement. Um, somewhat important, but not to the same degree as as um, features of his face. Okay, so we have his arm that's laying on top of a surface here. And then this comes in and this is his hand coming up. And then his fingers, pinky. middle finger and index finger, I should say. Okay, that just gives me a little bit of an idea of where these things are spatially. So I can coming up in here. And those fingers are dropping underneath. So let's go put in some of the negative spaces around the hand before I get um, deep into detail. This will help me start to see it a little bit better. So let me block it in his jacket now. And that's mostly a dull orange. You can mix a few colors together to get that color. And I need to get a little bit of the oil medium in there just to get it to come down come off the brush. Let's go darker there. Okay, and then the light air of his jacket has a bit more yellow in it. And have to go a bit light, a step lighter to get it to read as being the light side against the shadow. so bad. Green coming through his flesh tones. I'm just going to start to lay some green in here. 
trying to fill out where and then we have more red naturally in the fingertips We need quite a bit of green in the side of his hand here. It's the palm. And then there's a little bit of his forearm that's in light here. Then he has a little bit of jewelry on. I'm not, this is not going to be the finishing strokes, but just want to indicate more or less where it is. Who knows, if I liked it, I can make it the finish part of it and just make sure that I get all the colors right that are adjacent to it. Just trying to put in a little bit more detail and landmarks in the hands so I can get a sense of where these fingers are. yellow in this spot here, yellow and green. Starting to feel the hand a little bit more. It's taking to pain as sometimes his faces because of all the complex um, forms. Did I just say complex? Complex forms that are in the hands. So I have to pull this one finger.
Okay. Keep this rolling along. And I want to feel his shoulders bunched up a little bit here, which means getting this jacket edge a little bit higher. Okay, let me get the blue in that's around his head because that's going to help us get closer to what feels like a finished painting. I mean, sometimes it's nice to leave big areas, um, the blank panel or canvas, because that um, gives a lot more energy to the painting. And it's nice to see when someone has so much control that they can get the painting looking so real and having the, the background be for all intents and purposes blank. Okay, I need to get more white out here. Not white out, white out. You you know what I mean. White that's out. Okay, which white do I want? I think I'm gonna stick with the titanium white. I may put some drops of the radiant white here where I wanna get some really cool whites, cool Okay, it's still going here. All right. So it's about 10.30. My clock hasn't stopped. So I am, where's my pellet knife? Sometimes when you want to dig out a color and not get, a, get it contaminated, it's nice to have a little pellet knife to, to pull out just the amount of color that you want. Let's get a little oil in this mixture so it goes down nice and smooth. If I wanted to get a lot of texture of the paint, then I need a little bit. Okay. So his hair is coming out, bending around, cutting back. That's nice and brushy. Let's get a little more oil in this mixture so it goes down on this fairly dry board. Okay, that's not too bad. I'm going to throw in sort of a general reddish pink color for the back of his hand here. in that hand even though it's fairly undefined still but at least I have a sense of where it's going to be Sorry, my um, my connection started to drop out there for a minute, and so let's see if this says one that when it drops out and it comes back on it doesn't give me the right um, head count. But if there's one person watching, then that's just me because I trying to simplify the hand so see if I can get it to read without putting in so much detail. Um, I start to read properly. Okay, 
Drop back there for a few. Of course, uh, my mom's calling right in the middle of the demo. Um, I think she she was watching and maybe, which I'm not sure really works that well, that um, taking a phone call in the middle of trying to stream live on your phone, but um, that's okay. <clears throat> Yeah, it's going to take me a while to get these the hands working the way I want them to. It just requires... still have my big, big brush, just a fair amount of black in the hair. I can start to mix in some reds and oranges to get that general color. And then I can dry brush a little bit of that orange and yellow here. Sense of some of the highlights, but then I can come back in with white and some lighter colors to get a little more control. This eye is just feeling a tad bit low to me. So, in a measure. It seems to be spot on. And this distance here. get a little bit darker underneath the nose. And then soften that edge. Okay, Randy's here. Welcome, Randy. careful with that edge there. I had it almost exactly where I wanted it and then I came in and adjusted it slightly but just went too far to one side.
he's missing a little bit from the back of his head, which isn't too bad, but that's um, where his brains, part of his brains need to hang out. If there's not enough room there, then it looks wrong. Just softening a few of the transitions around the light side of his face, where I feel like the light is just bouncing around too much. Okay, I don't know what happened there. I dropped out again. Um, so this might be a little more fun to watch in the replay so far, but um, but it's still going. Still got a live feed going, believe it or not. some neutral colors in here. I haven't almost put any neutrals at all in the face. So it's probably just seeming to slamming bright color.
I'm spending a fair amount of time on the hair here, and I know I need to get back to the hands to get them at least resolved, but I like the interest that's going on in the hair there. Okay, Mindy says that she has avocados, which is a good thing, but since you're in California, avocados aren't that hard to come by. Out here in Maryland, when they close the border, we're going to have to start getting our avocados from California again, like in the, in, in like the 1990s. Apologize. Get that tip of his nose just right. Be good. He says, any bananas? I guess that was a question for Mindy, not for me, but that's okay. We've got lots of bananas here in Baltimore.
avocados because there's this fear of an avocado shortage. I went trying to get to the get their pick of avocados. Never seen anything like that. Some of these marks in the ears get quite red. Okay. If I can just get the hands working, I think that this would be. So but that says a lot because the um, Okay, he does have a shadow underneath his ear. I've totally neglected that. So the hands, I'm going to focus on getting the right silhouette of the hands in the right place, and hopefully that will...
think I need a sort of in-between size brush here to get the right amount of control. I had too small a brush and then too big brush. Too big of a brush. Okay, well, I think this is about as far as I am going to get it to tonight, so I'm going to end this um, stream here. I'm going to work a little bit on the hands, and I'm going to post this later. And so, hope you've enjoyed this, and um, I, this will be posted soon after I am have completed.